Welcome home to Unity San Diego. We're so glad that you've joined us today. May our service remind you in word and song of your connection to, your kinship with God and all of creation. So please join us in that same gathering music, playing its powerful messages for yourself and those you love. I am love. I
Good morning out there in love streaming land. We're starting our day with love. Welcome to our Sunday service. I'm Reverend Edith Washington Woods, the senior minister here at Unity San Diego, and Reverend Carla Leitner, our associate minister. Good morning. I'd like to start with prayer. Let us pray. God, the good, omniscience, everywhere presence, we join together, joining together our hearts and our minds, joining as one, as one universal presence, as one heartbeat, one prayer, one song, one dance. We're so grateful for us to come together on this day. May each of us discover something, something about our own spiritual journey that we hadn't discovered before. We're affirming it as so in this moment as we pray. Amen. And now we have our, our affirmation. If you, you can see it on the screen, and if you could say it with me, please, together. Guided, Guided by, by infinite, infinite wisdom, wisdom and prospered by divine love, we move forward in unity to realize our spiritual potential. Yes, that's the truth. And we have a vision and a mission statement. Our, our vision statement is bigger than we can even imagine here at Unity San Diego, but I know with you, we can see it forward. Let's say it together. A world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And it's the shared, you guys, that really, really hits the spot. We're having a shared spiritual awakening. And then our mission statement. Our mission statement is who we know ourselves to be, those who have physically been here at Unity San Diego, and many of you who have not. Let's say that together, please. We are empowering personal growth through positive spiritual principles, inspirational music, and community service. And I want to focus just for a moment on the empowering personal growth. What does that look like to you? To empower your own personal growth. Yes, we can get a little bit of it here, but we have to take it away from here and apply it in our lives. I'm trusting that you are doing this very thing. And if you're not, that you'll be inspired to do that work, to empower your own personal growth as we see it forward for each of us. Thank you. And now our opening hymn is Expression, Words and Music by Robert D. Anderson. So this is just a call and response, so I'm going to leave this to sing what I sing. Of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, magnificent, magnificent expression, expression of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, a unique, unrepeatable expression of God, a unique, unrepeatable expression of God, a unique, unrepeatable expression of God, a unique, unrepeatable expression of God. Spirit Spirit, I am an expression, an expression of the 
bias. And Edith, do you want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, we've been meeting twice a month since August of last year. And we have people who attend that are not part of Unity and people who are. And we've gotten this close niche kind of, you know, uh, group of people. And sometimes we get other folks who come. But if you could consider that there is some implicit bias happening in the world, that each of us might have, um, you know, a little bit of ism, whether we know it or not. Sometimes we're just not even aware of some of the words we use. Like, I was born colored, but I'm not, I don't use color today. It's on my birth certificate, but I'm not colored today. I consider myself a black person. And so even the, word, the words we use uh, when we express to people may not be the words that we use now in, in 2021. So if anyone is interested in coming and attending that, um, there are a couple of videos that uh, we watch during it, and you, you can get that before. And we just jump in and, and um, have some dialogue around it. And we're learning a lot about various cultures, various expressions. We just did a piece last time on Asian Americans, since there was so many heinous things going on. If you're interested, contact Monica at Unity San Diego, uh, at gmail.com, and she can send you the links and come and hang out with us from 6.30 to 8 on Thursday. And what I really like about this is that it really talks about everything. It's not just limited to one or two no. dialogues. So it really is inclusive, and it's a great thing to do. So the next thing is our spiritual recovery group. We are still on our deep study of the four agreements. Our group is getting bigger and bigger each week, and we so welcome everyone. We're working this time on always do our best, best, which is the fourth agreement. And how? How do we always do our best? Well, come join us Thursday at 7 p.m. so we can talk about how do we really, really do our best and how do we keep those other agreements of being impeccable with our word, not taking anything personally, and not making assumptions. You can email me at revcarlighter at gmail.com, and I'll get that Zoom link to you. Please join us. 
And now I invite you to relax and listen to our meditation song this morning, The Face of God, words, and, words by Rev. Car, is it Carl Huntley or Carol? Okay, Carol Huntley and Karen Drucker, music by Karen Drucker.
It can be a face from when you were a child, when you were a teenager, when you were any age of your life. And bring that, that image to your mind's eye. And as we go into the silence, I invite you to speak to that person you are. And just repeat these words. I am the face of God. I am the face of God.
a lovely song by Faith Rivera, giving praise for our personal and our collective connection with God, with one another, with nature, and with all of the universe. So it reminds us that the creative power and energy of God is everywhere present, and it's working in and through and as us, right? For years, for centuries, for eons, and even today, 
many people have an anthropomorphic view of God. Now, in unity, in, in some other circles, especially in new thought, we tend to believe that we are created in the image and likeness of God. If that is true, then why can't, couldn't it be a man up in the sky? You know, when I look at this, the, the image, I don't know why my clicker is not working, of the sky and the earth. And I think about there could be a man living up there. Then I, I kind of question it. Well, I used to anyway. But here's what I want you to know is that God is bigger than the man in the sky concept. One of our beloved teachers, Eric Butterworth, he stated in the book, In the Flow of Life, Carla, I need you to help me. Thank you. Still no. Thank you. In the flow of life, Eric Butterworth said that God is a spear whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. God is a spear whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. So if we take a look at this graphic right here. <clears throat> There's that circle that Eric Butterworth talked about in the spear. And if you're looking at it, you, there is no ending to it. There is no beginning to it. In the center, it just is. And in that circumference of the circle, there is no ending or beginning. It's, it's a little bit like the concept of Alpha and Omega. Uh, I looked online and in uh, religiousinfo.com, it says that the Alpha, and there's a symbol for it, and Omega, there's a symbol for it, are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet that when used symbolically in Christianity, they signify that God is the beginning and the end, meaning that God is eternal. So if we're looking at that, that God is eternal, that there is no ending or beginning, then it must be true that God is really everywhere. Now, that brings us to the omnipresence of God. And in a, uh, the Free Dictionary Online, it says that the omnipresence of God is defined as the presence of God everywhere at the same time, which brings us back to the universe. What about a starlit night? You look up at the, at the sky, and it's full of stars and we know the galaxy is out there, like the Milky Way, or you know, the planets or whatever. We can't see them with our own naked eye. You have to look in a telescope, or sometimes even a, <clears throat> a really large telescope. But the stars we can see. If God is everywhere at the same time, could it also be a person? In uh, Heart-centered metaphysics, Reverend Paul Hazelbeck, he said that, um, he wrote, spirit is divine mind, and it is everywhere equally and totally available. That God is omnipresence rather than omnipresent. So what is omnipresence? and omnipresent. 
Well, omnipresence is a noun. It is a state of being. It stands alone, just like us standing alone. But if we look at omnipresent, it's an adjective which describes a noun. Describes a noun. So when we're looking at the omnipresence of God, then we can know that it is every single thing. Omnipresence is a state of being, as I stated a moment ago. It is everywhere and expressed in everything, which is an expression of God. You see, everything and everyone is an individualized expression of the isness and allness of God. If God is the spear whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere, then each of us is the center of God. You see, you are the universe. We had the song, The Face of God. You are the face of God. And I know for some, it's a big stretch. Like, how could that possibly be? I have all of these things about me that may not be God-like. But what if, what if we are the full expression of God? What if we are how God gets around? What if we need to be the walking, talking, breathing, sleeping, loving expression? I think it's fascinating. I think it's absolutely fascinating that we are part of the universe, that we are part of mm, all there is. We can look at it as uh, the large things, right? Like the universe in the graphic you saw. We can look at it as the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxy, the ocean. We can even look at it as Mother Earth, like big things. Yeah, get it, yep, that's, that's the universal presence of God. But it's also as small as our heartbeat. Every sigh, every birth, every completion. I want you to imagine for a moment going to see a doctor. You go to see a doctor and they take your weight, which some of us hate them to do, and then they take you in there and, and they take all your, your whatever vitals they want to take, your blood pressure and all that. The doctor or the nurse practitioner comes in and they have what? A stethoscope. And what do they want to do with that stethoscope? They put it right on your heart. And they listen. Each of us, each of us have, have had this done numerous times. And they listen to our heart beat. And every one of us has the same rhythm to our heartbeat, unless there is something going on. But they're listening intently on just that Love them, love them. And we know if they don't say anything, we're good. So I want you to take a moment and, and put your hand on your heart. Just put your hand on your heart. Right there. Everybody's putting it in the same place. It's not over here. It's not up in our forehead. It's not down in our legs. We're all placing our hand on our heart. And if you listen, you can feel it. We don't have to tell it to be. It beats of its own accord. All of ours. This is the heartbeat of God. Just listen. This magnificent, unrepeatable, expression of God. 
You know, this month, the month of April, our spiritual power is love. And love is represented by the disciple John, which means unconditional love and forgiveness. They kind of go hand in hand. The color is pink. Some of us are wearing various shades of pink. And its location is the back of the heart, which I find very interesting. Why the back of the heart? Because the back of the heart, the blood is flowing through the heart, to the front of the heart, and all over our bodies, equally at the same time. There's no part of our body that doesn't get the, the, the blood flow. It's all getting it, all of it, right now. That heartbeat that we have keeps us alive. Without it, we would cease to be in a body. If you would consider this, that our heartbeat also keeps the universe alive. And that the universe is, is part of who we all are. What I really want you to know is we are the heartbeat of God. When we look at this and look at how large the expression of the universe, God's presence is, and how small it can be, I want to share with you our Sunday Eve prayer that Julie wrote today. She talked about this, that when uh, I am awakened to remember who I am, seeing a sunrise or sunset, colorful flowers and interaction with playful pets, I am again reminded who I am. Smelling the wet pavement at the first rain, breakfast, cooking and coffee, brewing all remind me who I am. Tasting the sweetness of an apple or quenching my thirst reminds me of who I am. I am your child. I am your child. And I'll expand this. I am a child of the universe. You see, our heartbeat is part of the universe. We are part of it all. All of it. We are part a divine mind. And in our Bible verse for today, which comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 2, it states, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. What does that mean? When we consider that we are the universal presence of God, that we are the heartbeat of the universe, then we can know that there really is only one mind, one body, one expression that is the universe, the essence of God. And in our second basic unity principle I, I have for you on the, the screen, I'm using the children's version, and it states, I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. So that university, universal, not university, universal, Y-O, capital universe, that we're part of it. That it's naturally good for us to know this. And if we embrace it, we can embrace it for everything, for all, without any judgment and just let go of the judgment and what we think about our differences and whatnot, because ultimately we are part of the divine mind. We're part of all there is. And it's a wonderful thing for us to know this for ourselves and for others. So I'd like you to consider this for your week, our affirmation, and here is what it says. I am a child of the universe, and so are you. Let's say that together. 
I am a child of the universe, and so are you. Again, I am a child of the universe, and so are you. How rich is that? It's simple, but it's powerful. If each of us take this on, we don't have to have any people who we don't love that we would consider as loving. We would actually take it on as the face of God. That if you are the face of God, then there's a responsibility that comes with it to practice being the face of God. To know that each of us is a child of the universe. And that no one can tell us we're not, or anyone else for that matter. So I want us to just consider it. I am a child of the universe, and so are you. And so is everything. We give great thanks for this opportunity to know the truth of who we are. And so it is. And so we let it be, us. And amen and namaste. Oh, we've got fun songs in my day in Washington, and so it is. You ready, Mr. Yeah. Ramon? <laughs> Here we go. Two, three, and. Sunday, April 18th at 10 a.m. So join us. Now, now is our time of giving and receiving. We have a basket here that represents what we do with the passing where you're here meeting with us. So you can actually go to our website. You can click on our donate button. And exactly where you're watching, you can do that. You can mail a check-in. We're so, so grateful. You can also do automatic giving. But we know that it does take ties and loves and love offerings to keep us going, to keep spreading unity. So we have our, our affirmation blessing that we say twice out loud and once in the silence. So I invite you to say that with me. Together, please. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And again, I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. 
I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. Let's just take that for a moment into the silence of our hearts. Mother, Father, God, we are so grateful, so grateful for the ability to share from our gifts, to enrich not only our lives, but the lives of others. And so we say thank you, thank you, God, and so it is. Well, well, our next, next song is called Out of the Question, question <clears throat> by Dave Wilcox. And uh, this, this song, song uh, uh, for me, kind of takes us on a journey. journey. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's primarily it's about that. that. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, you, you know, know perhaps God, God when you're younger, younger or even now, now or whatever it is, maybe doubting that God is this anthropomorphic, you know, man in the sky or whatever, but we, we kind of come to, you know, hear the rest of the song and, and realize as much uh, as what we have said, it, it, it's omnipresence. God is everywhere. God is in all of us. It's in everything. So here's uh, out of the question.
take a moment to just bless Carl Hoffman. And, and what, what does Gandhi, Gandhi have to say today? Peace is its own reward. And so we take a moment to bless these tithes and love offerings. Mother, Father, everywhere, every being, the universe, we're so grateful that we're able to give and receive. And we receive these, these gifts, these love offerings, these tithes, and affirm that it goes right back out there to bless you as it blesses this spiritual community. We're so grateful for how our abundance of giving and being here today with each other, that it feeds all of us. We're grateful. We are so, so thankful because we have a great, great work to do as we individually express that presence of God, as we spread this truth that we know. We are so blessed, so blessed to have these tithes and offerings so that we can move forward, realizing our spiritual potential, realizing the beauty, the greatness of oneness. And so we say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Well, Unity's foundation is prayer, and we are always praying. We have a wonderful prayer ministry. You can actually call them on the phone from Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 5 p.m. A live person will answer the phone. They'll speak with you confidentially and then pray on your prayer for 30 days. Now, if you want to call another time, you want to leave a message, that's okay. They'll call you back. They check their messages all the time. Again, we also have Silent Unity. Now, Silent Unity is available from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m. every single day of the year, including all holidays. The number's on the screen. You also speak to a live person, which is just, it's just so precious to do that, that holds your prayer in confidence and also prays for your prayer for 30 days. In addition to that, we also have prayer chaplains. Our prayer chaplains are always continuously holding each and every one of us in prayer. So let's take a time, a moment here, to just bless the prayers that you have, the prayers you've spoken. If you were here, we would have put in this prayer box. Maybe you've emailed them. Let's just take a moment. As we breathe in the beauty, the wonderment, the knowing that we are all one with God, the we have such this unique, wonderful power. We know that every single word we speak, every thought is a prayer. And we are always, always praying. And our prayers are so powerful. And as we put these prayers into action, as we speak these words, we call, we pray. We know that the highest good is always, always the best. The highest good for all. And the divine order is ensuring that each and every prayer is answered to the highest good of every situation, every prayer, and every person. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. So now please join us as we sing More Than Enough by Daniel Namad.
and the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Have a wonderful week, my friends. Bye-bye. Namaste.